Fosis and Matt once again, and at number 45 in my favorite horror films, my 69 favorite horror films, is Razorback. And I know this is a DVD-R, but unfortunately the film never really officially came out in the U.S. on DVD. I think Warner Brothers, I think it's them, they have something on like a website where you can buy movies, but it's practically a DVD-R, that's basically what it is. It's not an official release. It's got no features. Some of the movies they even have on there is not even the best picture quality. So, you know what? You might as well buy a DVD from overseas, which I think this is just a bare bones DVD, but great picture and sound and widescreen, which this film needs to be see seeing. But uh, Aaron, the Reese 007, he got a DVD. I think it actually has some features, which, uh, damn. But. That's okay. I'm glad to have the film itself. And I don't know why they couldn't... If Warner Bros. Okay, you don't release it on your website. Why the fuck don't you just release it professionally? You know, why don't you just fucking release it? I don't get that. So, well, they kind of did. Well, they kind of did it, you know. But anyway. Uh, Ra Razorback is directed by Russell Mulcahy. Um, I think this was... This was the first film, at least one of the first films, it was before he did Highlander. And after seeing films, like, I know some people like Resi Resident Evil Extinction, which he directed. That's fine. But when I watch this film, I kind of wish Russell Mulcahy would go back and do a film like this. Because it's a simple plot. I mean, you're the beginning, you have this old man who's watching his grandson, and this big fucking Razorback. It takes place in Australia, runs into his home, busts into his throne one and out the other, and realizes that it's taking his grandson. And of course, he's overcome with grief, and you have the tiles razor back. And in this opening sequence alone, you find out, at least to me, why I like the movie. The director really did an excellent job. It's beautifully shot. The colors are vibrant. It's beautiful to look at. The cinematography is excellent. It really uses the widescreen to its best effect, the landscapes, you know, having people... I mean, it's meant for widescreen. If you don't see this film, Razorback, which I highly urge everybody to, definitely see it in widescreen as best the picture quality as you can. And you know what? I don't need Blu-ray. This picture quality works excellent. But it's beautiful landscape of the Australian outback, and then it takes place a few years later where... First off, that guy, he was accused of killing his grandson. No one believes the story, but insufficient evidence. Um, he sort of cast aside, and he's been a revenge ever since, taking out Razorbacks, trying to find that thing. Um, so a few years later, we're in New York. Introduced our lead character, Gregory Harrison, who I really liked in this film. I thought he really did a great job. And his, sort of his wife... It's about their one-year anniversary. You find out later that she's pregnant. Um, she has a story. She's sort of a news reporter, but she's for animal rights. So, like, she don't go to Australia for, like, uh, kangaroos who are getting shot and massacred, stuff like that. So she goes over there, and a little bit of the film is her in Australia and with the locals. Um, she, you have these two sort of, I call them redneck, Australian-style rednecks. I don't know how, what you call them, but these two jerks, uh, basically they give her shit. She goes to their sort of packing plant, their slaughterhouse, films them. They don't like it, they mess with her, they fuck up her jeep. One of them is even going to try to rape her. And, but they see a razor back and they run off and she gets in her car and I love the way it was done. Russell McKay did a great job with the attack scene because first off, the razor back itself, way before CGI, and I miss those days, because the Razorback looks really well done. A lot of it is done in shadows. Um, you'll see it far away with the fog and stuff. Um, quick glimpses and shadows. But when you see it up close, it's very well done. It's practical, and I think it looks good. You know, I don't think it looks bad or cheesy at all. Some people will say so, but I'll disagree. I think it looks pretty damn good. And the attack sequences, they're a little bit jumpy, but not like today. They're jumping in a good way. Like, you can understand what's going on. And the way the director cuts and sometimes the scene transitions, like a guy will shoot a bottle, and when the bottle explodes, 
it's into our next scene on the road with someone driving. So he has some good scene transitions. Um, but, you know, the woman's killed. Gregory Harrison comes in because she's missing, and she want, he wants to know where his wife is at. And she had filmed some footage of the old guy, the hunter, and he said, you know, I'm sorry about what happened. Check out the Pit Pack, I think was the name, which is those two jerk-offs sort of their slaughterhouse. And he sort of says, hey, you know, I'm from America, you know, see how it's going, sort of playing it cool, find out what happened, and sort of helps them and goes on their sort of uh, hunting where they shoot a kangaroo and he's sort of upset. He even peeps on one of the guys. <laughs> and he kills it to put out his suffering. They get a little bit pissed and leave him out there so they'll be back in like five or so hours. And then now that he's, you know, scared out of his mind because he hears all these weird noises and, you know, boars are coming after him and he hightails it. And then that's like 10, 15 minutes of him sort of surviving the outback, you know, trying to get away from the boars, having to climb this fan, this uh, tower with a fan on it, windmill, I should say. And like he has a uh, weird dream sequence with beautiful landscapes. Like this is how I wish they would do dreams in movies nowadays, where it's like another world, but it's, it looks... I don't know, it just looks better. Maybe today it'd be shitty CGI, but it just, I like the way it looked. And like, it, it really is like he's on a, another plane of existence, but it's a dream sequence. It's very well done. And he wakes up and he finally gets to a, a place where um, this girl, who I think is one of the girls in the Road Warrior, I think the girl who sort of has the hots for the, the guy who flies, I think that's the same girl. And uh, she sees him and helps him, and she's sort of a friend of the, the old man. And I'm not sure if she's a relative of the guy or if she was just a friend. But either way, uh, they sort of hit it off a little bit, talking about you know what they do and stuff. The old man's hunting for it. And um, Greater Harris had told him that he had seen something by this watering hole, and the hunter sort of stays there, and it shoots at it, but it does nothing. And Greater Harrison sort of, he finds a ring and shows it to Greater Harrison. Greater Harrison knows what happened to her, that she was killed by this thing, and she's like, and I kind of bought this uh, sort of way it took with, is like, I'm going to go back home, you know, I found out what happened. You know, not everybody would be like, okay, I'm going to... Rambo style. No, a lot of times that happens. It's like if you find your... A lot of people find out their spouses or their friends got hurt. They don't go on a Terminator style. Sometimes it's like, well, there's nothing I can do. I found out what happened. He's about to go back, and those two jerkwads figure that this old guy was talking. So they, they bust his legs, and they leave him there uh, by this watering hole. One thing leads to another, the girl gets Gregory Harrison, she finds out something's gone wrong, and the old guy's killed by the Razorback. So she wants to get revenge, and he, Gregory Harrison's about to leave, but he finds some evidence, so that he knows it was those two jerkwads. And he fucks with one guy, saying, what happened, you know, did you hurt my wife too? Sort of finds out what happened. Um, the guy's like trying to escape in this hole, and he sort of, Gregory Harrison stops with a winch. And fire lets him go, and he sort of falls to his death. Then he goes back to the pet pack, the sort of slaughterhouse type of uh, packing plant sort of place. Fights with the other guy, and then the, the fucking Razorback comes. And basically you have a showdown where he kills the other jerkwad guy uh, in a good way. It's not a gory movie, but it doesn't need it. And the sort of showdown between it and Gregory Harrison is very well done. Um, is well filmed. Is well, uh, he finally gets the giant fucking razor back onto this conveyor belt. And I love some of the lines uh, Gregory Harrison says to goad it to come after him. It's like, if you don't come down there, you can kiss my ass. Or something like that. Sort of, you know, tricks it so he jumps over here and it sort of gets dug into this fan. A lot of uh, pink meat and sausages and bacon. <laughs> bacon bits are made. Um, and I sort of went, ran through the film. Maybe I spoiled the film, but I don't spoil it too much. You definitely should check it out. It's very well shot, well filmed, 
beautiful, beautiful photography and cinematography. I wish films were filmed like this more today. Bigger films don't even look as good as Razorback, in my opinion. The widescreen really does it well. So, you, I don't know, it's just every scene just marveling the, the landscape, or the Australian landscape, the, the colors are vibrant. It's hard to describe without showing it. If you've seen the film, I think you know what I'm talking about. If you see the film, I think this is definitely one of the best creature feature films of all time. Because of that, it was shot well, the director wasn't on his ass, he did his job well. A Gregory Harrison I liked. Um, he was a capable guy, but I, you know, I felt sorry for him. And he was a decent enough actor, in my opinion. He did a good job. As did the the old man who whose grandson was taken in the beginning. And I liked the the girl as well. Um, the score fit the film well. Um, you have a lot of good memorable sequences. Like one I didn't even talk about, where a guy sitting there uh, drinking beer, watching TV the night before he had. Something that happened, he had tied like something to the with chains and then tied to his house. Well, the Razorback comes again, rips through, and tears a big chunk of the guy's fucking house. So the guy's watching TV, right? And so, like, a big corner of his house gets pulled away with the TV. It gets pulled away all the way to the distance, and the guy's just sitting there, like, like what the fuck? You get really good instances of that. And it's like 90 minutes long, if that, so it's not a long film. Um, it's, um, the only problem is that a little bit in the middle when the guy, Greater Harrison, has to hang out with those two jerkwads, you, it's hard to understand those two guys. You know, uh, maybe, I don't know if it's a thick Australian accent, I don't know, but I understood the other people well, but those two jerkwads, I could, it was hard to understand sometimes what they were saying. And, you know, they were kind of annoying. Like, one of them has sort of a Peter Griffin, hey, 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 like, laugh, Peter Griffin laugh, which was very annoying. But those are your assholes that you hate, so, and, you know, they get killed, so. I was all right with that. And I felt sorry for Gregory Harrison having a hang out with these two, um, double Ds, dumb as dog shit, dumb asses. But... The film is well shot, well photographed. Grady Harrison I liked. Some of the other actors I liked. The Razorback, the creature itself, is back in the days where, you know, it was practical and they did a great job. He photographed in shadows, in quick cuts, um, hiding them, um, you know, behind buildings and you see little glimpses of it. And then when you see full force, it's very well done. I, I give it to the people who made the animatronics and stuff. It's very well done in my opinion. You have a, a fun showdown in the, in, the, in the plant, the sort of slaughterhouse. And, you know, it's a well-directed, beautiful looking, and entertaining creature feature film. And Razorback definitely gets my seal of approval. It's definitely a solid film. And that's why it is number 45 and my favorite horror films of all time. It deserves it. And uh, definitely check it out. So as Razorback, and thanks for watching, and take care. Later.